A few people asked about my particular workflow with Caden Live and Linux and all that kind of good stuff. So I want to take some time to show you how I piece things together using both my webcam, which I'm using right now, in conjunction with my Fifine microphone, my cell phone with its little microphone that I use. Uh, this is the uh, Rode Video Mic Me that I picked up for 30 bucks. My headset that I used as a lavalier mic, and of course my action camera. I mix these three together with some screen capture, and that's basically the tools I use. Hopefully the way I do this is helpful for you guys. So let's check it out. So this is the part you just saw just now. Here's the part that will be at the end. You have the ability to add folders. I usually don't take advantage of that. Probably should. Oh, here's the folder icon up here. I kind of work all in one folder. I'm trying to get better about, about organizing. Configure Caden Live. Project defaults. Let's make this a little bit bigger. It's a little squished here. I love working at 24 frames per second timeline. I like the look of 24 frames per second, and it doesn't hurt that it's easier to crunch the frames when you're rocking an i5 like I am. So 24 frames per second. I have proxy settings for clips, that I manually set those up. Yeah, my working folder. I changed my working folder to video because I didn't want them in the main folder. Timeline. So I removed thumbnails for video clips because I just put my cursor on the clip and then up here I can see what clip it is. I don't need I don't need a thumbnail and it makes it easier to see the waveforms because I work very heavily in waveforms. So those are some things I want to point out here. My workflow really focuses on zooming in and I'm going to disable the video track because when you do that, sliding, no matter how slow your computer is, an audio track is easy to slide. So I can see the dips, the holes, the gaps, and I just listen and trim. And when I'm done, the clips are edited really well. So the timeline is going to appear to play back really slow. Which I'm using right now. That's because I have already enabled the effects. If I disable the effects, and this may not show up smoothly on the screen capture, but full frames are playing back here. If I need to get in there, I disable those. But most of the time, I like seeing how crisp it's going to be. And I know exactly what I'm getting myself to do. Over here, RGB Parade. This is huge for me. This is how I know I'm not over or underexposed by too much. There's some areas up here right here that I've decided to go ahead and let them be overexposed because I think the overall picture quality is better. But I'm adjusting these colors with, I'm using the Lift Gamma Gain properties. I like these because this allows you to adjust the color temperature of your low, mid, and high as long as well as your exposure. So you can really dial in some color correction. In this one, I'm not doing that much color correction on it. And it's really, oh, let me get that actual clip. The color correction I'm doing is just real subtle, just kind of deepening some of the tones in a way that I think is aesthetically pleasing. Again, I am not a professional colorist. This is just what I like to do. So yes, I clip the audio and then clean up the video. And here we are. I have this full intro, just like you saw it. So other clips I have in here. I have up on my desk. Are you walking to get my drink? We'll add that in next. Here we have a long clip of a bunch of stuff you don't want to include. You can use these set input zone, set output zone. Here you can see I selected this to that. So if we go to the input zone, and play back. So here I am walking down the street uh, doing outdoor tests with this camera. This is the action camera, the Yeet action camera that I'm using. And hopefully you can hear me. I'm talking at a moderate but not too crazy loud volume. And we're gonna see how this looks and sounds in the timeline. All right. By the way, this is shot at 60 frames per second. It'll play to that point. If I grab right from this frame, boop, goes right into the timeline where I clipped it. Okay, because I've assigned effects to this timeline, I need to pull that out of that timeline so I can assign audio effects as I see fit. Again, this is a 60 frames per second clip that I've dropped into 24 frame timeline, but as you can see, it looks smooth because 60 frames per second is compatible with a 24 frames per second timeline. The clip I have right here, which I will go ahead and include the entire thing, this is shot my phone. I use a program on my phone called Open Camera App that gives me manual control. So I can get really in there, manually focus out there, and then manually focus right back in here with a slider. Oh, I want to talk about this format here. The phone is recorded as 
you might have heard in that clip, with Open Camera App. The resolution is 2304 by 1296. I purposely shot at a higher resolution on my phone so that when things go in the timeline, it crunches down. This allows crisper finished product. You don't have to do this, but I just I feel like the, the quality I get when I export it from that just looks a lot better. Again, four frames per second, uh, 40 megabit, because I like that high bit rate for the higher color. And uh, that's how I shoot from my phone with Open Camera App. I also have the ability to hook up an external microphone, which is a very big deal for what I like doing. Because of the magical weirdness of editing this timeline as I'm uh, filming this timeline, I'm gonna show you the changes I made since I got here. The clips I added here artificially, so you could see them with a composite filter. So you have uh, these layer tra uh, transitions you can add. My favorite is composite. I'm gonna go over here to this composite one here so you can see what I did here. You go to the beginning of this composite because it's keyframe based. I have opacity set to zero. And a few seconds in, opacity goes to um, 100%. This lets it fade in and out if it plays back smoothish. A few people asked about my particular workflow. And that's how I get that fade in, fade out effect. Here I'm just using it just to composite just because it does a good job of attacking that drop shadow, which is uh, makes it look really good. This, of course, is done with the text editor. You show the background. You a lot of tools and functions. I use ProFont for Powerline, and I add a drop shadow really simple text tool function. So I'm gonna add the clip I'm recording right now to this and then tack on my outro. So again, this is just the technique that I use. You might have a system that works better for you. I definitely think you should check out other tutorials on this because some of the techniques I use might not work for your particular use case, but they work great for me. And uh, I hope this helped. Until next time guys, peace.